Uh, first things first, we need to make an announcement so that um, a lot of people have been asking us whether attendance has been compulsory and I guess it's true because we only have only one session this semester and that we're also putting all of it on to YouTube that we've able to, I guess, eliminate the attendance requirement. But as an incentive to still come to the sessions, each session you come to adds an extra 1% to your final mark. Um, so that's a maximum of five. So even though there's six classes, um, if you attend all six, you'll still get 5%. If you attend five classes, you get 5%. If you attend like three classes, you get 3%. So um, that's the system that we're going to run for the rest of the, uh, I guess, course. Also, um, we have the assignment released today as well. So that's a group assignment for groups of less than or equal to four. So you can do it by yourself if you really wanted to. Or you could, you know, do it as a full group assignment, and that's. Done. Is it already up on the website? Uh, yeah. It's, so it's at this. It's at this link down here. Yep. So it's at asoc.unsw.edu.au/excel, um, and then I guess later it's going to be uploaded to the main website. Yep. yep. Okay. So, yep. Uh, we get started today. So, yeah. Adrian. Lesson two. Yeah. Uh, I guess the VBA version. So if everyone remembers to go, um, so we'll, today we'll start on lesson two, like the end of last week. So if everyone remembers how to get to VBA, it's just Alt F11 when you open the lesson two screen. All right. All right. Do I want to open magnifier as well? I'm not sure if they can see. Oh, yeah. mm. I'll just search magnifier. All right, so if you go to the, on the lesson two plan, under modules, there should be one for cells. Um, yep. Does everyone have that? Anyone, any issues? Okay. Right. Are you guys all okay lesson with it? Yeah, you have to open oh, yeah, lesson okay. two. All right, so basically what we're going to be doing for this one is we're going to learn how to, I guess, uh, interact with c cells in your worksheet. So that would be like either reading from them or writing to them. Uh, so I guess first of all, we're going to create a new subroutine. So we'll just call it like, I guess, sub read active cell. And... So essentially, all this all you need to do for this one is just so we just want to make a message box um, based on what the current cell is that we selected in Excel. So we just do message box and active cell dot text. Yep. So if you go back to your Excel sheet and you just say select a certain cell. So like, select, select Windows or something. And then you were to uh, run that macro that you just wrote. You're using F5. And it, so it'll give you back what your current cell is. And yeah, that's one way you can do it. Um, another way is if you go back to, or if you go back to the, the spreadsheet. So if you notice, we use dot .text for this one. And dot text actually gives you exactly what you see. So, Kevin, if you were to, I guess, wait. Um, can you just type a like type a long number in the cell? In the window cell? Yeah, sure. Oh, just I just do it here. Yep. Okay, hit enter. Oh wait. Uh, can you maybe just make it like a normal number? <laughs> yeah, I think that was that was it. Or just go general and or open that drop down. Yep. All right now, so if you were to just like 
make the column A thinner. So, so, so you get these hashes, right? That just means like it, the, the number is too big to actually fit in the space that you've allowed for it. So if you run your macro again, and if we're using active cell dot text, it'll actually give you back these hashes. Yep. So that's that's obviously not a good thing. So that's why we probably will. That's why you should almost never use dot text, and instead you should be using dot value two. So if you go back and just change that to value two. Yep. And run it again. And now it'll give you the actual number. Um, so just make sure that. Yeah, just avoid dot text if possible, because you could have that issue come up. Um, the next thing is, so another way you can actually reference a cell is instead of saying just the active cell that we selected, you can also make it uh, reference a specific cell in your worksheet. So you can do active sheet, or can you, we can make another subroutine first. Yep, just uh, read cell. Um, so we could just message box again, and we'll use active sheet this time. Uh, dot cells, and then you can just give the the row and the column coordinates. So if you want to get like the f say the second row and the first column, you would give it two comma one. Yep. So if you run this one. It should give you back Windows again as well. Because if you go back to the top left, Windows is in the second row. Uh, yep. And for in terms of active sheet, do you guys remember at the very bottom, there's all the different sheets down there? So that just means that the current sheet you have open. So if you were to switch to a different sheet like tax and run it again, you get a different number. Or you, you get a different value. Um, yep. So I guess if you wanted to be independent of what sheet you're actually using, you can use, um, I guess we'll show that now. So if you go to the, the left, can you move the screen to the left? Yep. So you can see the top left, there's like sheet one instruction, sheet two tax, right? So you can actually use those sheet names. So in this case, you'd be, so you can replace active sheet with just sheet one. And so if you run this now, it'll actually it'll do it'll, it'll give you what's the cell in sheet one, regardless of what sheet you're actually looking at. Uh, yep, so he's still in tax right now, but it still gives sheet one. Um, and if you want to rename sheets, you can go to the left again. So if you just click the sheet one, uh, then at the bottom you see name. Uh, a bit above. Yep, up a bit more. <laughs> yep, right there. Yeah, so if you change the, the name there, you can just use the different name. Uh, so whatever you want, pretty much, just to make it more intuitive. OK. Um, I guess the next thing is, so if we want to, you can also do things like selecting cells and copying cells. So like another subroutine. Uh, we'll just call it referencing cells. So if we can just do instructions, which is instruction sheet. Um, no, sorry, uh, message box again. Oh, sorry, no, no, no message box. Um, just instructions dot uh, range. So this gives you range allows you to actually specify the cell based on like the normal thing you would use, like a one. A2, etc. So you can just do cells and then parentheses, um, quotation marks, and then the actual thing you want to reference. So in this case, let's say we want to do uh, A1 or A2. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. So that'll give you the actual value in A2. And then we can say we want to select it. So you just do dot select. Yep. And so if you so if you do that and just run that, 
That's not. Uh, that's right. Charlie. <laughs> okay. Let's drop. Uh, okay, let's see. No, we just want to select it. Maybe okay. Maybe we can't do that. Um, okay, let, let's instead of instead of selecting, uh, let's just copy it. I think that should work. Did that run? Okay, so copying runs. Okay, so if you go back to the the Excel sheet, you should see like the little like thing to show that it's being copied. If you go back to instructions, yep. So that's how you copy it. In terms of selection, I don't know, I'll check that and get back to you. <laughs> um, and then finally, I guess just to actually write something to a cell. Or sorry, before that, um, you can also do, if you want to do a larger range, you can just specify that like normal in VBA as well. So you can just do uh, colon and then maybe say B3. So if you run that, it'll copy the whole, like an actual uh, matrix, I guess. Yep. So yeah, so there's two different ways you can use to access the cells. Like you can either use range or you can actually use cells and specify the row and column. Yep, do you have a question? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, you wanna look at that, Charlie? Okay, so I guess, then finally to actually write to a cell, um, we can use, so we'll create another sub, uh, just write, write cell. And so we can just do instructions dot, so say we want to write to this, the 10th row and the 10th column. So we'll just do dot cells, uh, 10 comma 10. And dot value. Uh, which equals, let's just say it equals hello or something, in quotation marks. Yep. So if you run this now, it'll actually, it'll put hello into that cell. Yep, so that's how you can write to an actual cell. Um, yeah, I think, we so that should be it, I guess, for lesson two. We can so use dot value two, right? So it doesn't matter. No, you just, just dot value. Dot value? Yeah. So if, it, if you did dot value two, it wouldn't work? I think so. You can try it. <laughs> Does that run? Yeah. It runs? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you can use dot value two as well. There's a slight difference, but it's not anything important. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you, want, you can just, just go and just click inside the subroutine you want to run and just press F5. Uh, because, um, and you need quotation marks around the, the hello. Also, it thinks it's looking for the variable hello, which it hasn't, doesn't exist. Yeah. OK, so I guess we'll go on to lesson three now. Um, do you want to open that up? Yeah. Oh yeah. So that was a that was a pretty important point. So, um, if there was no quotation marks there, then like Adrian said, it'd be looking for the variables here, which don't exist. So yeah. Hmm? So we're going to lesson three. Yeah. Yeah. What's the important point that KK said? Oh, just same thing. It's his problem. Just put quotation marks. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so to start off, we're going to, if you open up into the, the loops. All right, um, so does everyone have this up? So if you open up the lesson three file, there should be this already written in there. Just double click it. Oh, yeah. 
All right, so the first thing, so loops essentially just allow you to, I guess, run the same code over and over again. So I guess one of the basic loops you can use is a for loop. So to do that, you can just use, um, you just write, f so we'll create a variable first to use as our, like, our counter, um, which is dim i as integer. Uh, and then we'll say for i equals 1 to 10. Uh, yep. uh, return. And we're just going to, we'll just say triangles dot cells. Uh, so it would be i comma 10. dot value equals i. Yep. And then we just do, to, to finish it, we just do next to i. Uh, yep. well, I think triangles is plural, if I remember correctly. Yep. Yeah. So, so what that does is, so as, as, you, just, as you just saw with like the, the cells, so the first, the first parameter for cells is what row to use. So essentially, it's going to print 1 to 10 in rows 1, 2, 3, 4, until 10, pretty much. So if you run that, and then put it in column 10. So if you run it and check your worksheet uh, to the right, yep. So essentially, that just, it just fills in all the cells. Uh, yep. All right. And so I guess um, and just another thing. So if you go to go to the top and view, I think. Yep, uh, I click immediate window. So at the bottom now you can see this extra thing. And we can just use this for just like some debugging stuff, I guess. So if, instead of, say you don't want to print it out, out to the worksheet, you could just do, instead of doing triangles.cells, you would just replace that with uh, debug.print i. So if you run that, it'll show up in that little window that we just added. And yeah, you can see it all there. It's just another way to just see what you're doing. Uh, and probably just control A and delete all that stuff so it doesn't <laughs> get confusing. Yep. All right. So basically, it's just used like as a testing window for like working out. Say if you're doing, if you're creating a new function or loop um, and you don't know what the output's going to be like, and you don't want to like test it on your worksheet, you can like test it here first in the debug print window, which is the immediate window. Yeah. Yeah. Did anyone have any questions about that? Okay. Um, so the next thing is another kind of loop we can use is called a while loop. So I guess the difference, the main difference between a for loop and a while loop is like for for loops, you usually know exactly how many times you want to run it. So in this case, we know we're going to run it from one to ten. But a while loop is usually used when you don't know how long it's going to actually take. Um, so I guess to do that, we can, so we'll, we'll dim i as integer again. Oh, yeah. Let's see. OK. Um, oh, yeah, before we go into that, also, so the example we're going to use for this is called the Collatz conjecture, which is something just says, like, if you have a number, and if it's even, you divide it by 2. Or if it's odd, you multiply it by three and add one. If you keep doing that, un if you keep doing that over and over again, eventually you'll get to the number one. If that makes sense. So it's like a magic trick. Like no, no matter what number you start with. Yeah. If you keep like doing the process as Adrian described, you should get to number one. Yep. Okay. So we'll just we'll say i equals let's just say like five hundred two or something. Um, and then so for the while loop, the syntax is uh, do while. So we're going to say just keep doing this until, as long as i doesn't equal to 1. So 
just i, and then the does not equal sign is just, yeah, it looks like that. <laughs> so it doesn't equal to one. Uh, yep. And then so, like for the for loop, we use next i at the bottom. For this one, we just use uh, just loop. Yep. All right, so. Let's see. OK, so wait, do you want to maybe, so in this loop, right, what we want to do, can you just write it as a comment, and we'll, you guys can try it out. So if i, is, if I can be divided by 2, if, if i is even, then we want it to change i to be i divided by 2. Yep. And if it's, if it's odd or else, uh, we want to do i equals, so we want to multiply i by, th by, two, by 3 and add 1. Um, so to tell if it's divisible, you can do something. Uh, it's called the, the the modulus operator, and that's just uh, so you just write literally like, for example, maybe uh, nine mod four. So that just the, what the mod operator does? It just tells you whether it tells you what the remainder would be. So for nine mod four, you would just get one. So that's, essentially, you can use that to figure out uh, if the number is even or not. Because so you, if you just do, I guess, uh, i mod 2, you can check if it equals to 0. If it equals to 0, that means you can divide it by 2, and it's even. Yep. So I guess, do you guys want to try writing that if statement quickly? We'll just give you like a few minutes. Just convert that process into code, basically. So do that inside the inside the while loop.
or something we forgot, I guess, is also you should, probably shouldn't dim i as integer because it might go out to be, like for, for 500, it's, it'll be fine. But if you make it a large enough number, then it could actually end up going over the range for integers that we mentioned. So integers can only go up to like 32,000 or something. So just in, use it as a long instead. Um, but yeah, for 502, it should work. Uh, yep. All right, so do you want to just fill in the code? Can you just, just, uh, just don't clear the immediate window? Wait, can you just clear the immediate window and try it again? And then run it. Um, <coughs> and then. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right, so. Essentially, the, the code is up there if you want to just copy it quickly, if you haven't. No. I mean, like, not really. So essentially, yeah. So if you're trying to do this with a for loop, you, you can't really, because you don't know how many times we need to run this uh, unless you've actually done it before for this exact number. So that's why we need to use a while loop instead. Um, yeah, so you can just change the number to anything you want, pretty much. It could be like just something small, like, I don't know, even like 33 or something. Yep. And so, yeah, as you see, we, we, we always end up with one eventually. But the number of times it takes to get there is obviously will be variable. Uh, yeah. So is everyone okay to continue? Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, so after that, we're going to be going into the, the arrays, arrays module. And so I guess we'll start off with just uh, arrays are basically like, uh, they're like a, a collection of similar items. So for example, maybe if we have like, if we have 10 students, for example, you know, we could define 10 different variables, like student 1, student 2, student 3. But essentially, it just becomes a lot. Like, it's not really useful to do that in programming because you can't use loops. Well, so with an array, you could actually just loop through all of them. Um, so to define an array, you can do something like uh, dim. This is like, I guess, in tribute to Ben and Jerry's free cone day. We're going to do some ice cream stuff. So dim flavors 2. Uh, as string, so this will create an array, an array of strings. Um, yep. Uh, and then, so we also want to define uh, define a, another variable called just flavor, uh, and we'll and we'll define it as a variant Wait, uh, flavor. Kevin. Kevin, flavor. Oh, flavor. Yeah. So, oh. so I guess, um, so to assign, to assign a variable inside an array, you can use flavors and use that parentheses notation. So flavor zero would be chocolate. Yep. And you can just do the same thing for like flavors one, vanilla. And flavors two would be like strawberry or something. 
So I guess as you notice, like we 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 first define flavors um, with the two, and that basically means that I guess it goes up to index number two. So, but there's actually three elements inside that, which is a bit confusing. But yeah, VBA, that's what VBA does. Yep. So now, that, so we've defined these different flavors in our array, and what we can do now is we can actually just loop through the array and print out all the different flavors we stored. So to do that, you can use a the syntax is for each. Uh, and we use flavor in flavors. Yep. And then we just want to just debug dot print that. So we're just going to print flavor. Uh, next flavor, I think. Yep. So if you run that, you should see on the window at the bottom that it comes up with all the different, the three different flavors. Yep. Yeah. So I guess that's one way to, to do that. Um, yeah. And I guess so. As you saw we defined flavor singular. Um, as a variant, because if you're trying to use this syntax, like the for each, you ha that's just something you have to do for VBA. Um, and so an another way you can also loop through this. Yep. So another way is we can use that, that dim i again. So if we, if we add an i variable as an integer, So it's and useful to like put all your dims together at the top oh of yeah. the subroutine. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're just going to use something similar to what we did last time, which is like for i equals 0 to 3, or to 2. Yeah. And then to do that, we just you have debug.print, and we just use a similar syntax as above, so just flavors in parentheses i. Yep. So if you run that, you should get, it'll print twice now. Once for the, the first for each, and the second time for the for statement. Yep. So that's just different ways you can access the array, both in terms of like reading, reading from the array and also writing to the array. Okay, then, um, so another type of array you can create in VBA is, is a dynamic array. So as the one above, we defined it as just of size of, of size of three elements. But if, say if we don't know exactly how big we need to make it, um, then you need to use, the, you need to use this, this dynamic array. Um, so I guess the syntax for that would be, so let's just say we're talking about planets in the solar system. So dim planets as string, but this time we don't tell it how big to make it. We just give the parentheses again, just to show it's a, an array. Um, then let's dim n as integer. So let's say we, maybe based on the contents of our worksheet or something, we filled n based, you know, based on how many cells or something the worksheet has. So in this case, let's say we, we know that n is going to be 9. So we can set n equal to 9. And then we're going to read dim planets. Um, and yep. So I guess here we've so now you can actually so you can change the size of planets um, dynamically based on the contents of n. And if you don't want to use n, you can actually just put your own number that could be like one to ten or something. If you didn't want to, you can literally write the number there as well. Um, and so. I guess this syntax is also maybe a bit more clear because it actually shows you like the indices of the array, like to access it will be from one to n. Like before we started from zero, if you remember. 
So this one, if you define it like this, then it'll actually start from 1 and finish at n. Yep. OK, and so again, so like to fill out the to fill out the the array, we can just do something similar to above. So just planets one equals like Mercury. Yep. Uh, so planets two is Venus. Yep. Uh, so I guess that's, and so I guess now we like say. Say we found out that Pluto is no longer a planet or something, right? And so we don't want this array to be of nine planets anymore. We want it to be of eight instead. What you can do is you can do redim. And <laughs> yeah, redim preserve planets. And then we just do one to eight. Or, we, or you can redefine n to be. 8 as well, and then we do want to end either one. Yeah. And so I guess, so essentially it just resizes the array. And the preserve keyword there is, I think just means that anything that, that already exists in the array just stays there. So if you leave off the preserve, then essentially you end up in, with an empty array again. Yeah. OK. Uh, so let's say if we want to print out the array now, we can, just, we can use that for loop again. Um, or before that, we need to dim i as integer. Yep. So another, so before we started, we specifically said i goes from like 0 to 2, right, for the, the ice cream flavors. Uh, but for this one, we're going to talk. We can use a, another, I guess, another function in VBA, which is called uh, L bound and U bound, which stands for just lower and upper bound. So if you say you don't really know how big your array is, or like you don't want to have to worry about that kind of stuff to update it if the array size changes, you can just use this uh, this function. So we just say U L bound, and we just give it the array name. So planets. And then we just we give it the number one, which means it's the first dimension. That makes sense. so right now a, a planets is like a vector, so it's just one dimensional. Um, later on, we'll go to like to two dimensional stuff, which is like which is like a matrix or something. So the one just means it's the first dimension. So essentially, we're just saying, yeah. so L-bound planet should give us 1, and upper-bound planet should give us 8. So it just like, removes like, those random numbers in there. And then we just debug.print planet i again. So I guess right now we have a, a, lot, a there's a lot of blank lines because we haven't actually filled out the rest of the the rest of the array. But yeah, if you fill it out, it'll just show up there. Um, so if I guess we'll quickly go on to like 2D arrays, which are like matrices, and we'll just see if however much time we have. Um, so this is sort of created a bit. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so we, we'll, we'll show you how to create an array, a, a 2D array. So, for example, you could do something like um, we'll, we'll dim a new variable. Let's just uh, dim, I don't know, like 2D or array 2D. It's not there. Just just make a new sub? Yeah. No, no, just put it in there. It's fine. In here? Yeah. 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 And so if you use that 1 to 2 again, or maybe like 
say one to five, then you put a comma, and then you can put, say, I don't know, like one to three, for example. So if you imagine that, that'll be sort of like a, it'll be like five rows and three columns across. Uh, so that's how you, and then you just like as integer or string, whatever you need. Do you think we should, I think we'll leave it at that. So if you want to access it, I guess you can just use array 2D, uh, just be like one comma two or something like that. Similar to how we used cells earlier. So that would be the first row, second column of that, that array. Yep. Yep, and you can just print it out in the same way. All right, I think we'll leave the rest for next time. Yep. So I guess if you if you haven't got your card scanned yet, make sure you scan it. If you want the bonus marks, um, yeah, should be it. Yep. And um, just have a look at the assignment this week. And if you have any questions, um, I guess let us know via email. Yeah. Yeah. Or we'll go over it next week as well. And we'll try and go over it next week as well for a little bit. Yep. Yep. All right. Thanks.